Welcome back to the 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Noon. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for 17 News at Noon. I'm Nicole Kitsky. We'll begin with the latest on the coronavirus here in Kern County. Public Health reports 56 new cases along with nine deaths today. 406 people have lost their life to the virus since the beginning of the pandemic in March. Three months ago, we saw about 600 cases a day versus now roughly under 100 a day. There are currently more than 10,000 people recovering from the virus at home, while 30 are in the hospital. We haven't seen a number quite this low since March. And as Kern County enters its first full day in the state's red tier, businesses such as restaurants, movie theaters and gyms are set to resume limited indoor operations. But as 17th Taylor Schaub explains, parents looking to send their children back to the classroom will have to wait a few more weeks. Kern County will be moving into the red tier or tier two as of today. After a painstaking week of waiting, Kern's Director of Public Health, Matt Constantine, gave the county a collective sigh of relief Monday morning. We have finally, for two weeks in a row, met the state's metrics for the less restrictive red tier. While addressing the Board of Supervisors, he outlined the new ground rules under red, including the process for schools to reopen. There is a two-week holding period required by the state, but schools, if they choose, can decide to open up two weeks from today as long as they follow those modifications. Those modifications include state mandated guidelines on mask wearing, distance between students in the classroom, increased sanitation, and regular testing of employees. According to Constantine, it's also up to each individual district to decide when and how they will reopen. Uh, they can open up as a hybrid. Uh, they can open up completely. They can choose to remain uh, distance learning, which we've heard that some will continue to do that. The move to red also allows schools to reopen and stay open. Schools have a special provision um, in the, the state's documents that allows them to remain open even if the county as a whole reverts back to tier one or that purple tier. He also said several restrictions remain on extracurricular activities such as sporting events. Those still apply, but actual school learning um, can proceed. Meaning that if the county stays in red come October 28th, your child could be off the computer and back in the classroom for the foreseeable future. In a statement following the announcement, the Kern County Superintendents of Schools Office said in making their reopening plans, local districts will prioritize students who are most vulnerable to learning loss, including students with disabilities, English learners, and foster and homeless students. And we wrapped up our fourth day of free COVID-19 testing outside of our studios with more than 530 people showing up to get that free test. Now, the 11-hour event was held in partnership with the Kern Public Health Department and Kern County Latino COVID-19 Task Force. Many thanks to the Kern Community College District for the use of their parking lot. Now, if you missed yesterday's free testing event, the Kern County Latino COVID Task Force is hosting two free testing sites this week. The first is tomorrow at Lamina Cantina in Southwest Bakersfield. The second is on Friday at Vallarta Supermarkets in Southwest Bakersfield. Each test site runs from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and walk-ins are welcomed. Now taking a look in your 17 Crime Watch, an investigation is underway after the body of a woman is found during a property cleanup in Southeast Bakersfield. According to Bakersfield Police, around 9 Monday morning, a Bakersfield City Code Enforcement Officer was cleaning up a property on Daniel Street near East 3rd Street when the officer found a dead woman. Officers say based on the trauma to the woman, this is being investigated as a homicide. Police say the woman is around 28 years old. The coroner will release her identity at a later time. This is still an ongoing investigation. If you know anything, contact BPD at 327-7111. And we now know the name of the man involved in a deadly officer involved shooting after he allegedly stabbed his own mother. According to police, 27 year old Jose Marcos Ramirez was shot and killed by officers after refusing to cooperate. Police say yesterday morning they got an emergency call that Ramirez stabbed his mother multiple times. According to witness, 
Ramirez ran about a half a mile down East 18th Street. BPD said they tried less lethal foam rounds to stop the man, but had to use deadly force when he wouldn't cooperate. The mother remains in the hospital at this time. And we continue to track pedestrian safety. A man was taken to the hospital with what officials described as major injuries after he was struck by a car in Oildale. It happened last night around 945 on Roberts Lane near the Dollar Tree. California Highway Patrol says the 63 year old man was riding an electric scooter eastbound on Roberts Lane when he was struck from behind by a vehicle. CHP says the scooter had no lights or reflective materials and is a dark color. The identity of the man was not released. CHP says alcohol and drugs were not factors. And we now know the name of the woman hit and killed along Highway 58. CHP says 23 year old Leilani Ariel Ashley Rue was hit around 8 Monday night on eastbound Highway 58 near South Mount Vernon Avenue. When first responders arrived, they found Rue was hit by a semi truck going eastbound on Highway 58. CHP says for unknown reasons, Rue wandered into the roadway. An investigation found Rue was struck by multiple vehicles after being hit by the truck. She was pronounced dead at the scene. CHP says alcohol and drugs do not appear to be factors in that crash. Now let's send things over to Kevin Charette with a look outdoors. Kevin, what is it like out there today? Well, we're going to see a little bit of a haze, a little more than probably than yesterday as our air quality is unhealthy for sensitive groups. We're still looking at the sunny skies at 82 degrees, a west-northwest wind at 5 miles per hour, visibility at 10 miles. Now, yesterday we hit 87. We're going to be close to that again today. Overnight, we're at 62, and normally our high is 81, and 102 is the record. Here's a look at the numbers right now, 70s and lower 80s around the valley, and we've got some 70s into the mountains, 75 in Fraser Park, 77 in Dashby, and Lake Isabella at 73. 92 in Sacramento today, Fresno at 88. We're looking at upper 80s in Los Angeles, 83 in San Diego and Pismo Beach. They're in the 90s today, hotter than Bakersfield, 98 degrees. That is not a typo. That's what the forecast is calling along the coast and a northwest wind 10 to 15. And part of this is this ridge of high pressure that we've been looking at. We are going to continue to stay warm and dry the next several days. It looks like we'll see a change in the pattern by the end of the weekend into next week when we'll start to see some cooler air approach our area. But in the short term here, it's just going to be warm. We're still seeing some moisture out of the Pacific Northwest, but the bulk of this is coming to an end as this ridge is pushing a lot of that a little bit more northerly. And you see that on future cast here. Look at the air quality for today. Again, affecting some of us. It's moderate yesterday. Today, we're unhealthy for sensitive groups with an AQI at 112. And our daytime highs won't fluctuate much from yesterday. 88 in Bakersfield, McFarland, Delano, 87 out in Maricopa. For the mountains in the Kern River Valley, we'll look for sunny skies today and 83 in Fraser Park and Tehachapi, lower 90s into the Kern River Valley and then out in the desert. We're looking sunny today, 91 in Mojave. Look for that northeast wind 10 to 15. Here's a look at the extended forecast here and you'll see tomorrow 90, 93 on Friday and then by the end of the week and we start to cool down, we'll be back into the 80s by Sunday and into the early part of next week. For the mountains, we'll keep you in the 80s for at least Sunday, 70s, Monday and Tuesday. And then for the Kern River Valley, we'll also be in the 90s through Saturday, but then cooler weather by the end of the weekend into early next week. That's like your forecast. We'll be right back. In your 17 Health Watch in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, you can get a free mammogram screening. Now, CBCC Breast Cancer Health Center is offering free mammograms to anyone throughout the month of October. CBCC says doctors can detect lumps on a mammogram long before you can feel it. They say don't wait. Early detection could save your life. To schedule an appointment, call 616-1643. The 17 News is your local election headquarters. This morning, Democratic Congressman T.J. Cox of the 21st Congressional District weighed in on the controversy involving unofficial ballot boxes popping up across the state. The California Republican Party acknowledged placing the boxes across several counties in California, including Fresno County, which is part of the 21st District. Earlier this week, the attorney general called these boxes illegal. And during a virtual press conference today, Cox said the boxes undermine the disenfranchised Central Valley voters. David Valadeo's campaign said Valadeo had nothing to do with it. Now we're waiting on comment from the California GOP. And more than 250 ride hail drivers are making a stop in Bakersfield today, encouraging people to vote no on Proposition 22. 
If Prop 22 passes, it would allow app based ride hail and food delivery companies like Uber and Lyft to classify workers as independent contractors, allowing the companies to avoid paying minimum wage, overtime, unemployment insurance and workers compensation. Companies supporting Prop 22 have proposed their own protection models, including an earning minimum of 120% of minimum wage, a health insurance stipend and more. The group of drivers arriving today say if Prop 22 passes, it would quote permanently lock a workforce comprised of 70% of people of color into sub minimum wages and jobs with no benefits. The drive to the ballot caravan will arrive around 2 this afternoon at Central Park at Mill Creek. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Noon. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.